This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV and Association MTK Global via Zoom. Joined by Matthew Macklin. Matthew, how have you been keeping? Obviously, you've got a bit of light at the end of the tunnel now with uh, Matram and Sky's new schedule now. So how have you been? Yeah, I've been all right. I've, um, I've t- tried to make the best of the lockdown period. I've, I've done a bit of running. Uh, I've been eating better. Uh, just catching up on the things that I never have time to do. So, uh, yeah, just trying to make the most of it. But I'm really looking forward to getting back. It's great now that we've got the, the dates confirmed, the, the cards as well. There's some really good competitive matchups there. I think there might be a few upsets as well. So, uh, can't wait to get back to it. Matt, before we carry on, can I get you to go landscape, please? Be better. Sure. Yeah. yeah. How's that? That's much better. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, obviously, yeah, it's um, a good schedule and then it's topped off by a world-class fight with uh, Dylan White and Alexander Povetkin. Um, is that going to be a bit surreal, having a, a top-tier fight like that in Eddie's back garden? I think it'll be very surreal. I'm actually really looking forward to it because it'll be such a unique, uh, unprecedented situation to be sat calling a fight with no crowd, you know, without 20,000 people kind of screaming and shouting and cheering, that noise where you're literally nobody there except the people fighting teams and, you know, the border control and the TV people. So it'll be, it'll be very surreal. I think it'll feel, I don't know what it's going to feel like, to be honest, but I'm really looking forward to it. Well, we'll talk about that in due course in more depth, but we've got to start off with um, reports. I have to use the word reports, but yeah, Gerald Miller fell in another drugs test, Matt. Just uh, what was your initial reaction when you saw it? And have you seen his interviews given since? I haven't seen his interviews since. And look, I suppose, it, it, how do you simply say, it? you hear it again and disgusted, disgusted, not shocked though. Although, although a little bit surprised that Look, we know he's we know he's going to use performance enhances drugs, but the the kind of stupidity to kind of do it again. You know, you, you you've had that many chances, and you're back again to do it again. Like the brazenness to do it again and to think he's going to get away with it. It's just, but it also for me it raises bigger questions. As in, like, is that the way it's going now in boxing? Are people kind of feeling like they can't compete? I'm not saying everyone's this, but is, is it going to get if he doesn't get a lifetime ban, where's the deterrent? You know, if he doesn't get a lifetime ban, then what is that? What message are you portraying to the, to other fighters coming through, you know, or, or that are competing now? You know, what that you can, you, you can take PEDs, you get, if you, if you get caught and you might not get caught, but if you do get caught, all you're going to happen is get a slap on the wrist. You're not going to get banned for life. You'll get six months, you'll get a fine, but you know, in, in six months time or a year or whatever it is, you can fight again. I just think it, it, it's far too lax. If they don't, if they don't start really locking down on this, I mean, it's a problem already, performance enhancing drugs. I never used to think it was a problem in boxing. I thought it was in the, you know, here and there. But I think now, it, it, without a doubt, it's definitely become a part of boxing and it's a problem. But if it doesn't nip this in the bud and start dishing out heavy uh, you know, punishment, sentences, bans, then there's, you know, it, 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 it's going to end up like the cycling where everyone's on it. Mm. Who is issuing these bans? Because, of course, Nevada could uh, suspend his licence. They could issue a ban. But then he could go to another country or another commission, even in America, and box there. Well, that, that, that's, that's part of the problem. It, it, it's like, you know, in boxing, there's no central governing body, whether that's a commission or a sanctioning body. Is in like, what title you're fighting for? I mean, it, it's, that's what boxing, in some ways, is so chaotic it's like the wild west you know you're at the wbc ban you you fight for the ibf or the wba if it's not if there's not a consistent widespread every you know there's no fifa is doing boxing let's say in mma all right within ufc you know the ufc i know there's other the splinter groups within there's bama and there's bellator but if you really want to make money and be in the big time you've got to be in the ufc but in boxing it's so splintered that it's like you, you could get banned by the WBC, but you still fight for the IBF title, or you get banned, like you say, in Nevada, still fight in New York. Mm-hmm. So, oh, sorry. sorry. I don't know what's happened there. You got your back. My back on, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's so. Um, I don't know what the solution is, to be honest with you. I don't know that. And, yeah, I, I, look, 
if you had a centralized, like a FIFA type body, what's the reality? What's the, the, the reality of that happening? Uh, what's the likelihood? Probably very, very slim. So it's, um, it's difficult. I mean, M Miller, I don't know, man. He, you know, you think that after he lost out on that big, big payday, like let's let let's say from a conscious point of view, he's not bothered because let's say from his own point of view, he's thinking, well, I know X, Y, and Z are on it, and they're fighting and whatever. That's that's his own outlook. But let's say that's from a conscience point of view, he's okay with it because he feels that other people are doing it. Just from a in terms of a selfish point of view, then in terms of getting the big fight and making money, how did he not think? How did he think he's going to get away with it again? Or it's just it's flabbergasting, really, that that he was that brazen to do it again. In terms of a solution, is it not up to TV networks and promoters to kind of blacklist fighters now who are caught this many times? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I think there has to be, I think there has to be um, a shared response. I think everyone within but the powers that be, and you know who are the powers that be? Yeah, the promoters are some power that be, but there are other promoters. So all the promoters have to come together. All the TV networks have to come together. You know, the governing bodies, the sanctioning bodies, they have to come together. Everyone has to be united. to Because this is horrible for the sport. It's wrong, you know, to stamp it out and to get rid of it. Everyone has to come together. But, you know, you might have one net TV work network that might not be the superior network. It's not doing so good. And then all of a sudden they'll put a fight on because they'll say this is an opportunity, you know. I'm, I'm not saying anyone in particular. I'm just saying this is what can happen, or you know, a sanctioning body, or a promote one promoter might not be as good, or might not be making as much money, or putting on as big a fight. So he's happy to take that and put that on. You know, that's not going to work. Then is it? It has to be. It has to be a blanket um, situation. Everyone has to get on the same page. Everyone has to sing from the same hymn sheet. And I don't see how that is that difficult to do because surely this is. This is particularly something that um, everyone in boxing is united um, in, in the willingness and the desire to stamp this out. What do you think young fighters are thinking when they see these type of uh, reports coming out? And if, say, Miller doesn't really get much of a, a ban or, you know, it's not a lengthy ban and there's no kind of incentive blocking fighters from taking PEDs? What do you think young fighters are going to be thinking now? Well, I think what the worrying part is, is that you've got the guy that doesn't want to cheat. He doesn't want an unfair advantage, but he doesn't want to be at an unfair advantage either. And, and he's, if he's starting to think that everyone's doing it, and all I, all I want is a level playing field, do you know what I mean? So that's, that's the worry. That It's not that it's not that everyone wants an unfair advantage. It's that people don't want to be at a disadvantage. And if they start to feel that this is such a widespread issue now and everyone's doing it, where, where, where's that going to leave us? Then everyone's going to feel that they have to take it. Otherwise, they won't be able to compete. You know, I, it was like the Lance Armstrong situation. And, you know, Lance Armstrong wasn't the only person doping in the cycling. Do you know what I mean? He, he, was, he, he was, of course he wasn't. I think, you know, they said, didn't they, uh, wasn't it something like however many out of the top 15 at some point at all failed? I, I don't know, so you couldn't quote me and I could be wrong, but, you know, it was certainly, he wasn't the only person doping. So, and it was a case of, if you don't want to, you know, would you let someone have a, have a two mile head start? No. Well, if you don't, if you're not doping, that's what you're doing in the cycling. But, is that going to creep in? Is that going to be the same mindset in boxing? You know, and, and, and also, uh, it's worse in boxing because people die in boxing. People are getting punched in the head. It's, it's bad to be cheated out of winning a race and a gold medal or and winning an event or whatever, a Tour de France, whatever you want to talk about. Terrible. You worked hard. Everyone wants a level playing field. Everyone wants uh, fair play in sport. But in boxing, maybe, maybe this needs to start dishing out criminal charges. That's what I know. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I agree with him. You know, if you're, what, so what happens to a guy that fights someone who's on performance-enhancing on performance enhancing drugs and he gets killed? What's that? Is that manslaughter? Is it GBA? Like, what, what is it? 
it was that GPH because there's a bit of death. Is it is it manslaughter? I don't. But wait, you know, I, I know that was my family member, my someone close to me, and they got killed. A six month ban or a twelve month ban isn't going to quite cut the. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to feel like justice was served. You know, um, it's 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 a worrying time, really, when you you see the look. Gerald Miller isn't the only person, of course, he's not. But I think the fact that it's happened to him again, and he's you know he's failed all these different substances, and he he got banned and top right. You know, it's like there just doesn't seem to be any adequate deterrent in boxing. Mm. You know, and then you've got the inconsistency of someone like, was it Liam Cameron who got a four-year yeah. ban for, 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 for a recreational drug? That would have de- that would that would have made his performance worse, not better. <laughs> yeah. And he gets a four-year ban. And it was only a trace they found, anyways. But yeah. But so he he so social socially he's used a re- recreational drug. That won't have enhanced his performance. It'd have made it worse, and he gets a four-year ban. Like, there's no consistency. Is that the problem, though? Say we do get a body that, you know, judges over over these cases and there's one entity doing that. But isn't the difficult part you have to treat each case individually? Because Canelo, for example, some may say that was just bad luck and he didn't intentionally take something. We don't know with, with cases like that. Yeah, but it's, it's like a guy that takes Lemsip. And it's you know, and he gets which it, and there's uh, ingredients within that that might not be performance enhancing drug, but it's a masking agent. I mean, I'm no expert on it, but I know when I was fighting, if I was poorly or ill, I I consult uh, my manager. He would find out if there was anything in this that is on the banned substance list. Yeah, I was terrified of taking anything. I wouldn't go to the chemist to buy anything or doctor or anything because. I would want something within that to, to be a banned substance and come up and then I'm banned or and I'm, and I'm thought of as a cheater. So, you know, it's, it's, um, so it's the guys to, you know, that, 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 I don't know. It's, it's, it, <laughs> there's a lot of question marks when it happens. You know, you're, you're, you're a pro, you're an athlete performing at the highest level you know that anything you put in your system, potentially, you know, you, you know, there's a list out there of things you can't take. And I, I would tell you what that list is. But if I'm taking something that I'm not sure of, then I would, I would find out first before I took it because I'd be, I'd be paranoid of doing a positive test when I was innocent. So, you know, if you're, I don't know, it's, 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 it's one of those things, isn't it? People will say, it's a great, people will say, look, it was an honest mistake. And it may have been, but there will definitely be people out there that are thinking, come on, you know, do we really, are we really supposed to believe that? There'll be a lot of people thinking that. Just the last one on this. How do you feel about potentially Gerald Miller, the fact that he could be boxing in, let's say, 12 months again, or even sooner, who knows? I just think it's, it, it, it's making a mockery of boxing. It's making a mockery of it. If he boxes again in six months or 12 months, to be honest, if he boxes again, I think it's making a mockery. You know, he hasn't eaten meat, contaminated meat, you know, if the meat's contaminated, but he, but he hasn't, you know, or he hasn't taken, you know, he has tested positive for several <laughs> performance-enhancing drugs, which he obviously has deliberately taken, you know, so it's just, you know, if he is not banned for life, what is the point? Do you know what I mean? It's like guys who are clean and who are, who, who are legitimately, like I say, I was paranoid of taking things when I was ill because I was scared there might be something in it that's banned, you know, so, and I would check, you know, and it, so I, I don't, it's, it's, um, so someone that's gone out there and taken performance enhances drugs, not once, not twice, more than that time, you know, and 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 got was allowed to box again and failed it again. It's like, you know, I just it's 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 my it's what message is it sending out? You know, if he goes now and gets a seven million dollar payday at the end of it, what message is it sending out to people? 
All right, moving on. Uh, we talked about the the schedule uh, match room Sky have got up. Um, apart from White Povetkin, what are you most looking forward to, Matt? Bellotti against Jordan Gill. I think that's a great fight. You know, Gill, uh, to me, in terms of skill, uh, smoothness, you know, real sort of not hand, you know, he's, he's entertaining, isn't he? He's good to watch. He's, if you like, appreciate skills of boxing, he, he's really smooth, lovely boxer, great jab, all that type of stuff. Uh, but Bellotti, I think, is someone that could possibly spring the upset there. I think he's um, he's tough. He's he's super fit. He hits. He sets a really good pace. He's lost three fights out of his last five, so people might think, oh, maybe his ambition isn't what it was, or maybe he's not as good as we thought. But if you look a little bit deeper, I think the first loss against Ryan Wall, Ryan Doyle. I think he was looking past him. I think he was probably believing his own hype a little bit. He was undefeated. Um, he's lost with Ryan Walsh. No shame. Walsh, very good fighter, a lot more experienced than him. And he actually grew into that fight. He got better as the fight went on. Um, and, you know, the last loss out in Italy, split decision, didn't see the fight. But I'm guessing he might, maybe he could have got it. It was a split decision loss in, in Italy. So I think that, you know, if he can drag Jordan Gill into a dog fight, I think he's got a great chance because Gill, you know, against, uh, I think it was Tanako, he lost that, um, you know, went down. You know, got hurt badly to the body, but he got he looked like he was hurt every time he got touched to the body. Now, if that had been a one-off, if that had been because he was ill or, you know, he'd had a, maybe an injury to a rib going in, then that would explain it. But since then, because I was a Gill fan, so I was a little bit alarmed by how kind of easily he was broken down to the body. But I spoke to a couple of people since and seemingly, you know, he's been hurt to the body in sparring and it's a weakness of his. So, you know, if that is true, then, you know, I think that Bellotti may be able to get to him. Mm. Clay Congo is another good one, isn't it? Another good fight. Really good fight. I mean, that's, I mean, listen, they're all, the, the, the uh, what's the other one out there? Listen, women's boxing. I think Natasha Jonas and, and Terry Harper. That's going to be a good fight. It's easy to forget that Jonas was, you know, an Olympian and she was well schooled. I know she fell apart in that fight in Cardiff, but she's come back since then. And, you know, Harper, world champion, undefeated. It's a good fight. Matt, um, I don't know if you saw the statement from Marcellus Wilder, so Deontay Wilder's brother, that was going around about this autopsy that Wilder's apparently having. He's got a dent in his head from the Fury fight, and they're saying that's because of the, the tampered glove situation. Thoughts on this? I think it's ridiculous. I mean, anyone who's fought for a world title... Uh, probably more so in America than anywhere in the world because of the commission, or, you know, all the different commission people will know that the amount of people that have to kind of sign off on your gloves being put on and are there watching it literally by your side, I, I, I don't think it's possible to do any... In Nevada. Pardon? In Nevada, especially. They're so... Yeah. Yeah. In Nevada, New York, I mean, they're just, they're literally, they're just there. It's like you can't, I don't see how it could be even done if you wanted to do it. The amount of people that would have to be in on it, on the conspiracy, would be, you know, you're talking probably a dozen people would have to know. Have you found it strange since the rematch between Fury and Wilder? All we've heard really from their side is about this, these rumours. I don't know where they've even come from. And we haven't really heard anything else from Deontay Wilder. Do you think he's broken mentally? I think he probably is. I mean, he was, um, he took his soul away. You know, he backed him up. He busted him up. He manhandled him. He ragdolled him on the inside. He bullied him. You know, he was a beaten man when the fight was over. He was, he was beaten. There was no fight left in him. Um, you know, we're complaining. Uh, his, his head coach was, was moaning about the stoppage, but I know that, uh, look, it should have been, he was, I can't, it was, um, I can't think of the name now. Uh, it's got, what, Mark Breland or Jay Diaz? Mark Breland. Mark, Mark Breland. Breland. Yeah, yeah. yeah Mark, Mark Breland was spot on. It was spot on. He probably, you know, it was, and the, he, he, the fight had been knocked out of him. He, he was beaten. And uh, can he improve on that? I don't know that he can. I don't think he can. I, um, I think he should. He should have. There was talk of step aside money and Pulev getting step aside money and going straight into a, a Joshua Fury. I think Wilder should have done that. Because I think Wilder needs a few fights to get his confidence back. Um, 
before going back in. With Fury, I think I'm straight back in there with Fury. I'm expecting the same outcome as last time, even not even worse. Yeah, he could have got a lot of money and then a guaranteed shot. He could have made that sure that was in the contract at the winner of Fury Joshua. Yeah, exactly. And I think from a from a, a boxing point of view, that would have made a lot of sense. He would have given him a chance to have a fight, get a win under his belt, put maybe get put some, put some of those demons to bed a little bit. Um, but you know, going straight back in there with Fury for me, I just think that's a business decision. I don't think you, that's a decision based on what's best from a boxing point of view. Um, I'm expecting a, a very similar outcome as the last fight. Maybe it's a pride and ego thing. Could possibly, be possibly. But, you know, making all these excuses as well, saying, oh, the gloves or whatever, you know, it's a little bit like he's in denial about what happened. And if you're in denial about what happened, then you can't really improve on what happened because you're not addressing it. You know, you, you have to be truthful and honest about what happened if you're to deal with it and improve on it but if you're blaming it on other things then to me you're in denial about 